everyone, this is Peter here. Welcome back to another little macro adventure. If you've been watching my channel lately, in the last couple of videos, I was experimenting by stacking the Nisi 58 and 77 millimeter close-up lenses, just to see how much more magnification we can get out of that setup. And this time I'll be using my Raynox DCI 250 snap-on lens in combination with the 58 millimeter close-up lens on the Canon 100 millimeter macro. In this first shot, which was taken just on the 100 millimeter Canon at one-to-one -one magnification. You can see how much detail we get on this subject. And in this second one, only the 58 millimeter close-up lens was attached. And in the third one, both the Raynox and the 58 millimeter close-up lenses were combined for a maximum magnification of approximately, I'd say, in the 3x range. I think it's going to be quite difficult to use this setup because of the extremely shallow depth of field and on top of that the working distance is very short, approximately one inch, two and a half, three centimeter I'd say from the front element of the Raynox DCI 250. Anyway, let's get on with it. I'm going to start searching for some subjects. As usual, we've got plenty of subjects around waiting for us, so let's get started. In my last video, I managed to capture a beautiful sex spider that was resting on a small sapling just right here will be there in a couple seconds. I'm gonna try and find it again. Hopefully it's still here. I can't see the male which was beautiful orange color you can see in this uh, image. I've only been able to spot the uh, female that is resting right now in a cylinder shaped little retreat sack. I'm gonna try and capture it first. I don't want to get bitten by this species so I'm gonna do a bit of reconnaissance just making sure that the maximum magnification is set. Although I might bump into the vegetation, this is gonna be difficult. Uh, I'm gonna hold this still. Oh, this is really dark. I have to bump up the SC2 and 500, which I don't really like on this APS-C sensor, but it is what it is. You can actually see her, one of her front legs sticking out of this retreat sack. She's potentially laying eggs there or might have already laid eggs we don't know but they might have been mating last time because i saw some really interesting action between the male and the female anyway let's move on and try to find our next subject here's a second subject i've already captured this one before as well at a lower magnification with the combination of the 58 and 77 millimeter lenses but that time i had to turn the focusing ring all the way to infinity just to be able to capture this little specimen. Hopefully it's gonna remain in the same spot. It's crazy that I can completely fill the frame with the subject, which wouldn't be bigger than, I'd say, a centimeter in length. Loggy, what's going on? It's one of our friends, male magpie, that likes to be fed rolled oats. So this time I'm focusing on the abdomen. All right, this one has worked for sure. This time I'm gonna be turning the focusing ring all the way back to infinity, just to zoom out and try to capture it in one single frame from further away. Focusing is extremely difficult. I move just a millimeter away and I lose the focal plane that I'm after, which is right in the plane of the eyes. All right, let's have a look at this shot from a much lower magnification. So far, I've been really enjoying using this setup, even though it's quite challenging. Let's go and search for our next subject. A Pacific black duck just flew by. I found another subject. A darkling beetle just crawling up on this branch and I've reset the magnification to its maximum so ISO 250 100 of a second and f14 that's really nice I can actually see the omatidia what's really fascinating is that at this magnification loggy come on behave What's really amazing with this setup is the level of magnification is substantially increased than, for example, just with the 100 millimeter macro lens. So I suggest you use it for capturing much smaller subjects than usual. Very small flies, very small insects, 
smaller than a centimeter because you will still be able to feel with those subjects the frame entirely. I just found another subject, an orb weaver species most likely, maybe an eastern bush orb weaver. And it's just resting right there. I'm gonna zoom out again because I want to capture the entire specimen. So I'm really happy with these last couple of shots. I turned the focusing ring all the way towards infinity to try to fit the entire subject into the frame. But even at this magnification, parts of the subject were missing, such as the front or the hind legs of this core beaver species. Once again, I'm really happy with the overall image quality and the sharpness is exceptional. And I thought that it would degrade quite substantially once you start stacking, you know, and add more and more elements to the uh, macro lens, then you would assume that the image quality is going to be worse. But not this time, especially in the center of the frame, it's still really, really nice. I just found a very small spider species, most likely a maratus or peacock spider. And it's a female, I think, and it is super small. It's just resting on one of these dried stems. Oh, it keeps trolling me. It's actually my finger now. Don't jump around too much. Oh, unfortunately, I couldn't capture the jumping spider, the peacock spider, because it decided to leap off that dried stem and uh, I couldn't recover it. I can't see where she's gone. I've got another subject though, which is a Portuguese millipede. It's crawling just right here on this uh, patch of moss. Let's see if we can capture it. I'm gonna try and get it onto the stem again. Let's see. As you can see, it's right there. It's moving around there. His legs are amazing. I've got one shot where I managed to focus just right on the eye and the detail is exceptional. Got some really tiny flies on some of these blades of grass. I'm gonna zoom out because I think I'm gonna bump into those blades. Not using maximum magnification, this is the lowest possible because I just wanna capture the species. I think it's a non-biting niche, most likely. Beautiful iridescence on the wings. It's pruning itself at the moment. Now, let's try and do this at the maximum magnification. Upping the ISO to 400 again. I'm not expecting much. I think it's gonna fly away, but let's try. I've just found another orb weaver that was wrapping her prey. Lowest magnification again. Let's see if we can capture it. Such a beautiful spider. I wonder if the victim is still alive. This orb weaver is beautiful. Wow, it looks so amazing. The way it's prepping its little prey. This is ridiculously cool. It's just trying to escape. I just stayed here for a couple more minutes and the prey has actually managed to get out of her or his temporary imprisonment. I managed to grab a full magnification shot, so here it is.
I'm gonna move back up here. It's a little bit more arboreal because there were too many mosquitoes near the water. And they started bothering me, unfortunately. I haven't got repellent with me. Hopefully you've been enjoying the video. So far, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much. I found the spider on my backpack right here. Will I be able to capture it? That's the question. Where did you go? That's why you gotta be careful here in Australia. All these spiders. I think I found our very last object. It's a really beautiful red velvet mite and it's resting just over there. Hopefully it's gonna stay still and I'll be able to grab a couple of shots at maximum magnification and also zoom that a little. Oh, I'm really happy with this. That is really nice. And now I'm gonna zoom out. Here are a few more shots that I captured later on and some that I had taken the day before. I especially like the really detailed stacked image of the mosquito and also that mono ant that was carrying what seemed to be Lacewing's first instar. I'm gonna wrap this up for today. Thank you so much for joining me on another macro adventure. If you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, and I've got heaps of macro content for you to check out. I've got different playlists such as the macro photography, extreme macro, and also the educational nature videos might be right up your alley. So thanks again and see you all very soon in the next one.